intercession courage intercessors must be courageous people there are three areas in which they must manifest courage courage before god courage with regard to themselves and courage with regard to the object of intercession courage god was the intercessor will labor to live a holy life and he will deliberately separate himself from all sin however when he appears before god he is still to remember that he is a creature he is coming to ask god not to execute some action that is certainly right but uh, he is coming to beg and plead god for be forgiven and to be considerate towards him an intercessor is kinder than god and bears the people more on his heart than god bears them when intercessors should cry out night and day for salvation of erring souls it would seem as if he cares and god does not such thoughts could have very paralyzing effects on intercessor they could make him lose heart and give up intercession nonetheless he must not lose heart he must press on and be very courageous whether he is praying for the person family nation and their sins or uh, for the whole continent a intercessor needs to remember that it is god himself who has started ministry of intercession and god has called him for intercession and god must be glorified it is an act of obedience for those who love god and obey him every intercessor must bear in mind that god has condensated to make him a co-laborer with himself and graciously waiting to be given instructions commanded by men it is therefore compulsory for intercessor to move ahead and command god to be waiting on god always The boldness of the intercessors in the Bible is astounding. Moses said to God, "Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people." He again commanded the Lord, "Pardon the iniquity of thy people." And there are many places where he boldly is asking God question, "O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against thy people, whom thou hast brought out of Egypt with thy mighty hand? Alas, these people have sinned. Blot my name out from the book of life, I pray thee." Each intercessor must come before God with boldness. He must be courageous and have nothing of his own to give as merit. He must nonetheless come and God calls him to and draws him near and commands him to and is desperate to have intercessors who want to save and who need cooperation of an intercessor and of God. He wants to do great things but he cannot do it without the cooperation of intercessors. God is unbound in heaven but heaven's unbinding is not enough. Intercessor must also bind on earth what God has bound in heaven and what he has bound will remain unbound in practice until the intercessor rises up and binds on earth and sets people free and therefore intercessor rises up and proclaims what he has already brought to pass when that is done the effects will be seen intercessor has a holy duty to be bold and courageous he surely knows the god he is dealing with he knows his greatness however he must rise and boldly do what god commands in this way he will satisfy the heart of god Do not be afraid or cast your fears on the Lord. Ask of him and he will make you a nation. Become aware of the exceeding greatness of God and to satisfy his heart we have to have a burning desire to come to him and intercede without delay. God encourages his people to move ahead and do things for him and for themselves. We have to believe that intercession is the greatest work that a person can do both for man and for God. For God encourages the intercessor. The Lord says to you as Moses said to the spies, "Be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land." You too can have good courage and bring the fruit of intercession for the glory of God and blessing of his people. The words of the Lord to Joshua was also addressed to us. The words of the Lord to Joshua also addressed to us. If was to take the land physically through physical warfare, we are to take the land and the people of the land through spiritual warfare of intercession. We needed courage just like Joshua. The Lord said to him and says to us, "Go over the Jordan and all the people, fellow intercessors, into the land in which I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon in intercession, I will give you as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon as far as the great river and the great Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the Red Sea towards going down of the sun shall be your territory." So No man shall be able to stand before you all your days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong of good courage, for you will cause this people to inherit the land which I swore to their fathers. Therefore, Joshua, son of Nun, turn not from it to the right or to the left, but have good success in intercession. The book of the law shall not depart out of my mouth, but shall meditate on it day and night, and that you may be careful to do according to what is written in it. So you find this that the Lord commands the intercessor to intercede. He commands him to be more courageous and commands him not to fear, to ask for big things. He assures him that wherever the sole of his foot will tread, there will be blessings. The intercessor is called to turn to command and uh, obey God. If the intercessor obeys the command of God, then he will have blessings. To him, him, 
the uh, obedient intercessor will be obeyed by god intercessor yields to god's command will in turn be yielded by god secondly he must have courage towards himself as a person draws nearer to god he becomes increasingly aware of his unworthiness as saint paul says in his letters and those who were reputed to be something what they make uh, no difference to me god shows no partiality those i say who were of reputed added nothing to me but on the contrary when they saw that i had been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised just as peter had been entrusted with the gospel to the circumcised and they perceived the grace that was given to me james and kephas and john who were reputed to be pillars gave to me and barnabas the right hand of the fellowship that we should go to the gentiles and they to be circumcised Later on he said for I am the least of the apostles unfit to be an apostle because I persecuted the church later he said the saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came to the world to save sinners and I am the foremost of sinners how could you approach the glory of god and not cry out with isaiah woe to me for i am lost for i am a man of unclean lips this is the answer to the twofold question how can anyone who is a foremost of the sinners ever intercede How can anyone who knows a very deep sense of inner unworthiness ever come into the presence of God and plead for another person? First of all, no intercessor dares to come on his own merit. He must come on the merit of another, and God graciously provides the merit of another so that the intercessor can come. We can come by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, which is the most perfect sacrifice, and the Holy Spirit also bears witness to this. This is the covenant that we make. Remember that all our sins and deeds have been forgiven, and they are. now able to enter the presence of god the word of god continues to proclaim god's position and invites us the intercessor therefore brethren since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of jesus the new and living way which he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh and since we have a great priest over the house of god let us draw near with a true heart full of assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from all evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water we are unworthy on our own another impart sir to you the worthiness do not enter god's presence on your own stand in christ put on christ and then come into the presence you will be accepted confess to him your lack of personal merit accept the merit of jesus and boldly say to the father and to the demons i have no merit of my own however in christ i can enter god's presence and intercede i will approach the father not as a sinner but one who has been worthy to stand in the gap because of the merit of jesus i am apart from the lost i am apart from the saints who are failing I am called on by God because of the merits of Jesus. Even when the Satan falsely accuses us and depart from me you liar when he raises point of accusation against us tell him that I am between my father and myself and uh, I am standing because of the merits of Christ. These are the grounds of intercession that we come on behalf of others. One of these that God is not called a perfect people to intercede. He does not call blameless people. We have to know that we are always living in sin yet we are qualified. Elijah was a man of like uh, nature with ourselves. He prayed fervently for the rain and for 3 years 6 months it did not rain. Then he prayed again and the heaven gave way to rain. Elijah was not perfect. He could be discouraged but uh, he could also be lost. Yet we need to be courageous and boldly challenge the prophets of Baal. He was boldly challenged uh, all the prophets and courageously brought down fire from heaven and burned down the offerings the other reason that we should be courageous is that you are not a mere mortal you are made in the likeness of god since we are made in the likeness of god we are the children of god what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him god has made us little less than a god and has crowned us with glory and honor boldly we can come into his presence because we are children of god and we are also accepted into his presence do not be put off by sense of personal inadequacy do not uh, confess your inadequacy when the lord has made you adequate in fact he exalted you and made you little less than a god even though you are mortal you are a god in god's presence made in his image and likeness we need courage towards the object of intercession there can be situations in which the intercessor could ask is it right for me to ask god to pardon the person or these people Is it right for me to bless this people? Am I not asking God to thwart justice? Am I not asking God to cover the sin with blessing? Such question can come to the heart and mind. There are times when we wonder whether it was not a sin to ask God to bless the nation which is full of hypocrisy. Three things have kept us back. First of all, we have to know that there are times our own walk with the Lord may be a failure and hopeless. We deserve the worst. Yet 
we do not call for justice but plead for mercy we can only do to others what we can do to ourselves plead for mercy even in the most desperate and deliberate rebellion from god secondly plead for a righteous people is not intercession intercessor really comes in with hopeless situations when people are walking with god obeying him from the heart they do not need intercession the one who needs intercession are people who have failed and deserve judgment lastly intercession of the bible pleaded for people who are given to erring things and uh, acts uh, from god moses interceded if now i found favor in thy sight o lord let the thy people be saved these stiff neck people they have not repented yet he is still the praying for the stiff neck people for their inheritance even though they did not repent he pleaded for these difficult people who did not stop sinning there are a number of issues from here first of all intercessor is inseparably bound up with the people for whom he is interceding their sin becomes his sin and their destiny his destiny therefore the matter of asking if he will intercede is out of question it is like asking and begging god to have mercy on him if indeed you become an intercessor you have to labor not only to save them but to save yourself he is one with them and if they perish he perishes every person who ever walks with the lord knows that if you only forgive sins and were repented of there will be no hope for anyone there are so many sins that are forgiven by the lord without the sinner repenting it is only on that basis that anyone can have hope god does forgive while we waits for repentance to follow am i being a heretic i hope not i only believe and know that god has forgiven me many times and continues to walk and lead me before he opens my eyes to the fact that i have sinned i want to be very honest that uh, there are times when my sin was shown to me and i lacked the power to put it away or was unwilling to do it immediately i only say that although i deserve to have been abandoned from that point of view god nonetheless bore with me and forgave me along with me spoke to me and was with me and allowed me to have repentance yes his love conquered me and led to deep repentance and forsaking of sin the lord allows people to repent only because they experience his love therefore we need to be courageous before the lord and intercede he can ask that the people be forgiven any sin that they have committed and he can even insist and argue with god and command god and ask god if it is the only sin in the world and ask god if he can never forgiven people who have done such a thing he can even ask god if that particular sin was not covered by that single offering where jesus perfect offering on the cross sanctified everything he can even ask god why he is looking at the sinner directly instead of looking at him through the finished work of christ thus the intercessor can be bold and courageous such courage and boldness do not only apply for mercy but also for those who sinned the intercessor is not only standing in the gap that uh, god who should not destroy anyone he should also bless everyone the question that is arising is what extent the intercessor should ask god to bless man family nation city etc the answer is that twofold first of all intercessor should in general ask all that the word has promised for those concerned take for example the portion of the bible that say may the god of peace himself sanctify you holy and may your spirit soul body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our lord jesus christ the intercessor can ask the person be blameless in spirit soul and body he can ask the person never sin he can ask that the person should love the lord and should be perfect in physical health and blessed materially there is no limit to what one can ask for he should not stop asking for example it could be quite in order to pray that everyone in a family be saved there is nothing like asking for too much the intercessor makes a list of people in the city and labors in uh, in prayer for the salvation of each and being very faithful to it and includes everyone the father does not reject anyone because of the limitlessness of atonement there is intercession for all and all can be saved the second aspect as to how far intercessor can ask god to bless a man family city nation depends on the rema of god the intercessor will pray gradually but he will also pray specifically he will wait on god and allow him to reveal the needs of the person or person that he god intends to meet having seen what god wants to do and what god will do he will then labor in intercession so that god will come to pass there is a sense in the intercessor is a person who has seen what god intends to do and unites his will with god's will and then labors by prayer for what god has in mind to come to pass he is a proclaimer through prayer of god's will the eye of the intercessor is fixed not primarily on the needs of man but on what god has in mind to do the intercessor then is a co-laborer with god laboring by prayer to ensure that god's will is brought to pass this gives added ground for boldness before god having seen the plans of god to bless the people planet nation or place he then comes before god and labors that it be done he can clearly say the greatest intercessors come out of revelation 
when a prayer has seen that god has some purpose to do how can we not be bold in prayer having seen what god wants to do how can we even vague in prayer having seen what god intends to do how can we even stop seeing what is to come to pass we can say that revelation leads to intercession god so in intercession god's will to do for someone else is revealed to a person god's will is prayed back to him for action this is how intercession proceeds when god intends to do for someone a uh, reveal to the person concerned and god's will prayed back by the person concerned this is ordinary prayer there will be times when god's will must be known and then prayed through with utter boldness there will be times when intercession is not a fruit of revelation however all intercessor should labor to know god will live in his presence hear his voice and pray through this realization their boldness and courage will come out of the firm assurance that what they are asking is god's will and then he will do it the intercessor is fully persuaded god is so committed to his will that he he the intercessor only cooperates that his will will come to pass let us take example of intercessor's courage elijah and the rain after many days the word of the lord came to elijah in the third year saying go and show yourself to ahab and i will send rain upon the earth so elijah went to show himself to ahab and elijah said to him go up eat and drink for the sound of the rushing rain is coming so ahab went up to eat and drink and elijah went up to mount carmel bowed himself down and put his face between his knees said to servant go up now look towards the sea and he went up and looked and there is nothing and he said this seven times at the seventh time he said behold a little cloud like a man's hand is rising out of the sea and he said go up say to ahab prepare your chariot go down and let the rain stop you and in a little while the heavens grew black with clouds and wind and there was a great rain god gave elijah the revelation elijah bowed himself in the intercession elijah continued to intercede until what god had revealed comes to pass another case we have is david trying to build the temple of god Now when David dwelt in the house he said to Nathan his prophet I live in the house of cedar but the ark of the covenant is under a tent and Nathan said do all that is in your heart but then the lord's message came to Nathan go and tell this my servant David that you shall not build a house for me for I have not dwelt in a house since the day I led the people out of Egypt in all places where I moved with Israel did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people saying why you have not built a house for me Now therefore thus shall you say to my servant David thus says the Lord I took you from the pastures from following the sheep that you should be the prince over my people Israel and I have been with you wherever you went and I have cut off all your enemies before you I will anoint a place for my people Israel will plant them there and dwell in their own place and be no more disturbed by violent men I appointed judges over my people I will subdue all my enemies and more over declare to you, the lord will build you a house when your days are fulfilled to go to the fathers i will raise up your offspring and establish your kingdom then king david went in and said before the lord and said who am i o lord and what is my house that has brought me thus far and this was a small thing in thy eyes therefore in order to honor thy servant for the servant's sake o lord according to thy heart and all that draweth all his uh, greatness in making me known of the great things there is none like thee o lord and there is none besides thee And now O Lord let thy word that is spoken concerning thy servant and his house be established forever and do as thou hast spoken and thy name will be established and magnified and God has revealed to thy servant that it will build a house for him and therefore thy servant has found courage to pray before thee and now O Lord thou art God and thou hast pr- promised this good thing to thy servant now therefore may it please thee to bless the house of thy servant that it may continue forever before thee for what thou O Lord has blessed is blessed forever King David wanted on his own to build a house for the Lord and this thought originated in him it was from human goodness it was sacrificial but not God's will motive is good but not of God's will the purpose was good but did not originate from God real prayer and real intercession must have its origin in God they must be God's will all else is useless for God the best that originates in man is useless before God God refused that which originated in David and instead revealed to David that he is the lord who would build the house for him and david on hearing this did not go away rejoicing he went in sat before the lord humbled himself and praised and extolled the name of the lord and labored in prayer that all what god has promised would come to pass he could not pray clearly but for the fact that god has revealed himself to do great things in his life he continued praying 
Prayer and intercession must begin where God has made things to be known. David kept pleading before the Lord, and now, O Lord, let the word which Thou hast spoken concerning Thy servant and concerning His house be established for ever, and do as Thou hast spoken. Prayer and intercession is a labor that the word Rema. which god has spoken concerning a servant people or place should be established it is insisting with god that he the lord might do as he has spoken it is as if god is under obligation to do what he has spoken but only when this intercessor is uh, forcing god to do so according to god's will it will be done and david continued to plead you my god have revealed to your servant that you will build a house for him so your servant has found courage to pray to thee courage to pray and to intercede come mainly from the fact that the one praying or interceding has had god's will revealed to him and he is praying according to that will the intercessor then knowing god's will commits himself to labor until it is done he will be courageous in prayer even if the outward evidence shows that the person or persons are deteriorating as he intercedes they are continuing sinning and they are not repenting they are becoming more resistant to god as the intercessor presses on he must be courageous and not give up he must press on even when god seems to have turned a deaf ear to his praying and he must press on when there is no hope and against hope he need to intercede and continue even when people are saying where is god he must press on even when the devil say this is hopeless and he must press on when the flesh say this is waste of time he must press on if he has to labor at it and grow gray in the process he must press on until victory is won for having heard god having heard his will retreat is impossible he must go on because victory must come